morning, everyone. Uh, these are all. Well, why don't you guys have a seat to start with? Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Wow. We all need another cup of coffee. <laughs> My name is uh, Greg Kimura. I'm uh, President and CEO of the Japanese American National Museum. Welcome to the Cafe Uchi Democracy Forum, the National Center for the Preservation of Democracy at JANA. <coughs> We're so pleased that you're here today, and, and the museum is so pleased to be partnering with this, com this uh, I was going to say conference, but it's a summit, Beyond the Bad and the Ugly. And I was talking with Jeff a little bit earlier. Um, this is the right place to hold this. Um, and we are just so pleased and so honored to be partnering and uh, to be helping to facilitate this. I know a lot of interesting, important uh, uh, work is going to be done today, some good connections and uh, some critical thinking and all of that, and, and a lot of fun, too. Um, I do, legally I'm supposed to talk about all the you know, nuts and bolts things. First of all, in case of an emergency, Make your way or in an orderly fashion to the exits. So I become the, the flight attendant. Over here, or over <laughs> here, and then there's an exit upstairs. For the other type of emergencies, the bathroom emergencies. The bathrooms are located on the second floor um, as well. And we have uh, uh, in, right by the elevator and the, the, the stairs upstairs. Um, finally, if you have one of these, I'm going to, tell, I'm going to borrow this, uh, this saying from, from uh, one of our trustees, George Takei, a.k.a. Mr. Sulu. Set your phaser to stun. <laughs> Set it to stun. Now, I, I normally say, or better yet, turn it all the way off, but this is in part a media conference, and I'm assuming, Jeff, you're going to want people to be blogging and tweeting and all that stuff. So just put it on stun, leave it on, and you can do all the tweeting and Facebook posting and all that in the meantime. Okay. Now it's my pleasure to uh, invite your fearless leader, Jeff Yang, to come forward. Welcome. 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 I mean, this is, uh, <laughs> come on, yeah. Give me a round of Thank you, Los Angeles, for being uh, so particularly awesome this weekend. It's beautiful outside. The fact that you guys are in here in a dark room with us is, <laughs> is something that uh, we're deeply, deeply grateful for. This is uh, the culmination of two months of crazy uh, panic and <laughs> desperate wheel spinning uh, and some immense, immense support uh, across the board from both the participants, uh, from a a fantastic group of funders on our uh, Indiegogo campaign, and of course from you guys, who have been so enthusiastic about seeing this happen. And, uh, and so again, I say welcome, because we have a big day, an amazing day planned for you guys. And it's one that uh, hopefully will not only contextualize uh, the larger conversation we're a part of every single day, as Asian Americans, as Americans, as human beings, uh, but also some of the paths forward away from some of the things that we're still seeing today, and still shaping our existence, our perceptions, and therefore our reality. Uh, before anything, I want to thank some of the institutions that have made this organization, uh, this, this uh, summit, so possible today. And we're going to begin, first and foremost, with uh, the Japanese American National Museum. As Greg said, yeah, come on. Please round of As Greg Kimura said, this is the ideal place for us to have this event, not least of which is because there's no event that crystallized the reality of how stereotypes, how perceptions shape our reality than the one that made this museum possible. You guys know, if you guys know your history, and if you're here, you probably do, at least I hope so. If you don't, go across the street. <laughs> there's, uh, there's plenty on, on display to, to get you up to speed. Uh, but we, are, as Asian Americans, experienced some pretty rough moments in the history of our uh, coming to this country and living in this country and becoming a part of this country 
And obviously, the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II uh, was one of those that uh, is, to this day, still among the most painful. It was a time when we, looking at what we do today, looking as we do when we look at each other, uh, were questioned for our loyalty, for our belonging, for our very presence in this nation. And that's kind of at the core of what we talk about when we talk about stereotypes. A lot of things have changed. A lot of great things have happened. We are in a better place today than we have been in centuries of our existence here in the United States. And yet, we still have to ask, how much still has to change? I want to begin, first and foremost, with a little video, just to kind of, you know, put you guys in the mood, shall we say. Uh, so let's bring down the house lights. Let's watch a movie. Secret Identities, uh, an attempt to actually recast the narrative of America to inject our presence as Asian Americans, our stories, our history as Asian Americans in it. Uh, and four years later, we're still, we're still seeing images like this, representing the bulk of how people see us as Americans. Last year, uh, at the end of last year, we published a new book, Shattered. Uh, those of you guys who are here have seen it outside there. Some of you guys may have picked it up. Some of you may have read it, bought it. Uh, and Shattered uh, was, in many ways, part of what kicked off this event here today. At the same time as we were planning that book, we were outreached to by NYU's AK Institute, one of our uh, great uh, co-presenters here today, uh, with an, a unique opportunity. William F. Wu, uh, right over here, we'll be hearing from a little later, uh, terrific author, a science fiction creator, uh, read for television and the screen. He had amassed a collection of comic books uh, that, over the span of four decades, tracked the evolution of the Asian image in this most pulp of popular fictions. From 1942 to 1986, a period in which Asian Americans uh, were growing at a an astronomical rate, and, and a period in which America was almost constantly at war, or at least in conflict, with Asian countries. We saw the image of Asian Americans defined primarily by propaganda, by the ways in which war 
and competition and international politics define the enemy. Well, those images were pulled together and, and those comics pulled together into an exhibition called Marvels and Monsters. And uh, what we found as we actually looked through this huge library of comic books was that these images clustered in patterns, in archetypes that keep on appearing again and again. And, and that you'll see, even in, in that short set of clips that I played here today, the alien, the eternal foreigner, right? The brain, sort of weaselly, uh, smart, but, you know, kind of uh, celibate <laughs> individual. The, uh, the brute, the silent, uh, mindless buffoon or thug. Um, the temptress, the, who you know, excites and destroys with their wiles. And the manipulator, the being who lurks in the shadows and controls all, the puppet master behind uh, a vast conspiracies to control the world, much as we saw the evil professor in that last clip. You have to fight the future. Right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and we created an exhibit called Marvels and Monsters that showed how these images evolved in the comics and how they were contextualized in our history. The sources of these images are overt. They are, they are part of our past as Americans. The present of these images is in our control. The first half of this day is going to be all about looking back, looking around, understanding how it is that these images have shaped our lives and continue to shape our lives. But the second half of the day, after our lunch, is going to be all about moving ahead and looking forward. We are not here to whine. This is something I want to kind of repeat again. We are not here to whine, okay? Because every time anybody brings up race or stereotypes, the first thing people say is, can't you take a joke? Why are you guys complaining? Can't you just lighten up, right? We're not here to whine. We are here to talk. We're here to share. We're here to open our minds, to be frank and candid, to be real, to connect, and we're here to find solutions. We're also here to rethink what it means to be part of these narratives that have shaped, again, many of our lives directly. What's happening, hot stuff, right? <laughs> some of you guys may recognize that. It's a mantra which some of us have had to live with. The fact is, stereotypes define us but they don't have to control us. And myself, I had this revelation for the first time when I was on a panel, actually about masculinity and Asian Americans. I don't know why they asked me, right? <laughs> um, but that was actually part of the point, because it was myself, it was Asif Mandi of The Daily Show, and it was uh, Yul Kwan, uh, who you guys may remember as uh, the first Asian American to win Survivor, uh, and a, a man who at the time, he's you know, a few years older, has had two kids since. Uh, but at the time, he was possessed of perhaps the most amazing abdomen <laughs> known to Asian American kind. And uh, the conversation, you know, took the standard turn. It was back in the, uh, you know, what, early 2000s, I guess, about how our image as men was always constantly being represented in a certain way. You know, Asian Americans always, you know, presented as geeks. They're, you know, chubby and, and have glasses and terrible haircuts and you know and I, you know, I'm sitting there thinking yes they look just like me <laughs> and I, I, I turned to the audience and said you know yes stereotypes are a problem when we're only looking at mirrors that look a certain way when we're shaped by certain preconceptions and expectations it is a problem but we as human beings with our flaws, with our negativities, with the things that actually make us rich and robust and complicated, we're not all good. We're not all positive. We're not all beautiful all the time. Um, and as a result, when we think about stereotypes, we're not talking here about erasing negative images because there's a negative aspect to all of us. We have underbellies, you know? We have weaknesses and vulnerabilities. What we're looking to is to become real and three-dimensional, complicated. So when you listen today to these people talk across the full spectrum of topics, of ways in which stereotypes shape us, but don't control us, think about it from that perspective. Look at yourselves and look at the buttons you guys have been asked to wear. We deliberately said you can only choose one for a reason, right? Because all of you guys today are being shaped by a single dimension, the one that you chose. 
the one that frames you as who you are. For me, it's geek. <laughs> That's not so surprising, right? Um, but when I look around and see other people wearing this button today, I'm actually saying, yo, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Member of the tribe, you know? <laughs> the chosen. Um, you guys, you're my family, right? You guys have faced the same expectations and perceptions wherever you go. At the end of the day, we have a reception to kick off this event. All of you guys, take off your buttons. Be who you are. But for this day, for the course of this exercise and journey, I want you guys to wear these with pride. Talk to each other about why you selected these buttons, what they mean to you, and what they've meant to your lives. And have a great day, guys. Thank you.